Welcome back to Comcast Newsmakers in Depth. And joining me in the studio now is Kat Gutierrez. She is the uh, program manager for the California School Health Centers Association. Thank you so much for stopping by. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Now, I know when I was in school, we had a school nurse, and you sort of went to that person, maybe if you scraped your knee or you mm -hmm. had a fever and you wondered, or an upset tummy. This is not what you're talking about when you're talking about a school health center, is it? Right, right. A school-based health center is like having a doctor's office right on your campus. It's a quality health facility that can provide a range of services from first aid to counseling to preventive care and even at some clinics, state-of-the-art dental services. And this is happening in California schools right now? It is, it is. How, what percentage of the schools have uh, such a clinic? Well, there are 200 school-based health centers in the state and second in Cal California is second in the nation with the number of school-based health centers and they serve over 205,000 students. So 200 health centers in the state, how many schools are there though? How many schools are there? I'm, I'm, a, I'm assuming that's a small percentage of the schools. It's a small percentage of So you want to schools. see them in more schools? Definitely. There are 45 currently in the works and the number is growing and we're really trying to push that here in California. How are these paid for? Well, no school-based health center is really paid the same way. So there's a variety of funding streams. You might have a school district supporting the health center from a community clinic, private foundations, and even federal funding. Again, no school-based health center is alike in the way that it can provide services to the community. What, how did these get started? I mean, did somebody just decide I'm going to put one in a school and then it took off? <laughs> <laughs> so the oldest school-based health center is nearly two decades old and it really looked at the needs of the community. At some point, folks realized that there needed to be some kind of access for primary care for students on the campus. Again, more comprehensive than what, say, a nurse's office would provide. Mm -hmm. More than just taking your temperature and putting a Band-Aid on a scraped knee. Exactly. So what are the, you say that there are other outcomes other than just improving the health of the student for having these centers. Talk about some of those other impacts. Right, right. We believe acute care, chronic disease care, those are really basic. The more deep outcomes that we see is the youth leadership development that come out of school-based health centers. Oftentimes, the robust school-based health centers will provide youth programming that will support peer health education and advocacy work so that young people have an easier transition into adulthood with healthy decision making. What kinds of services, I mean, you, you talked about mental health services, for example, that's being provided. Do parents have to give some kind of consent then for all of this to happen? Mm -hmm. So school-based health centers only provide services that the community asks for. So in all right, at any point, if students, their parents, and even teachers see that certain services are necessary within the clinic, they'll be provided. So in many ways, we see behavioral health services, mental health. More often, we see primary health services at the health centers, like physicals, checkups, chronic disease care, preventative screening. We might even see dental care, right? Um, and this is a place where students can even receive basic immunizations for the school year. I was going to ask about that because I know that seems to be an issue in some uh, communities where parents have not taken their children for immunizations. So they can come to the school and actually get the immunizations there. Right, right. And parents can provide full consent for students to receive those immunizations so that they can be healthy for the school year. How many people are we talking to staff these centers? How many people? Well, it really depends on how big your center is. Sometimes you might see a front office staff person and the nurse practitioner, or you might see those two in addition to the doctor, the pediatrician, um, a dental technician, anywhere from 2 to 15, maybe even upwards 20. Are there any obstacles right now to seeing this grow and, and taking this uh farther in terms of more schools? Certainly. There are always obstacles along the way. I would imagine cost is one. <laughs> that's, usually cost. The, that's usually an obstacle. Right. Cost is one. Um, and I think we see that, though, as an opportunity to really talk about how can cost really be applied when it comes to young people's health. It's a really proper investment when we think of the intersection of health and education and how school-based health centers really support that for young people here in California. Mm -hmm. So you are uh, looking at, you said, a lot of different kind of successes and in, in terms of the academic success, you're finding that kids who had, let's say the kid needs glasses, for example. Right and that had never been diagnosed. Is that the kind of thing that would be taken care of in the center? Definitely, definitely. Time and again we've heard that story where a young person can't see the chalkboard and can only realize that they have vision problems until they enter the school-based health centers. 
In a different situation, we know of students that can't focus in school, are extremely sleepy during the classroom setting, and they realize that they actually have type 2 diabetes. Mm. That wouldn't have been caught had they not come into the health center and been screened for it. And also, you said that they can prescribe uh, medications if it's a kid who needs uh, some medication for attention deficit disorder or something like that. Can these health centers prescribe medications as well? So that isn't necessarily happening in the school-based health center. What really happens is primary counseling and all anything that's prescribed within the center really comes from the parent's own um, allowability for the students. So in no ways will really anything be prescribed beyond the necessary steps for a young person's mental health or even behavioral health. Now one of the controversial areas is sex education. <laughs> Does that come up in the health care centers? Uh, do they dispense condoms, birth control pills? <laughs> Certainly. Uh, this tends to be the most controversial aspect when it comes to school-based health centers, but we like to say that school-based health centers really only provide the services asked for by the community, and no school-based health center in California operates beyond beyond California law when it comes to condom dispersal, uh, sex education, or reproductive health services. So if a parent is listening and says, I would like a health center in my kid's school, we don't have one, what do they have to do? Well, they can go to our website at schoolhealthcenters.org. We have a myriad of services and information and resources on how to get a school health center in your community. And does it tell them how they can get the funding if it's a case where they need the money? Yes. We definitely provide technical assistance to support school districts and communities on how to shoulder the resources and funds to bring a health center to a school. Do the medical workers who work in these centers volunteer their time or are they paid staff of the school district? Right. It depends. Um, some of these medical staff are employed by community clinics. That might be the sponsoring agency for the school-based health center. Some are registered employees of the school districts. And we do have some cases where medical staff will volunteer their time because they believe in the school health center cause. Well, it sounds like something that uh, is working, at least in the schools where it is already, and something that perhaps we'll see more of in the future. Mm. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kat Gutierrez, for coming in and talking to us about school-based health centers and the benefits of those. Thanks. And thank you for joining us for another edition of Comcast Newsmakers In-Depth. I hope you'll be with us again next time. I'm Barbara Rogers. Goodbye.